This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. So this is a really interesting one. I got a call that the dishwasher exhaust fan is not working. And these pieces are bolted or welded to the dishwasher and they've fallen off. Therefore, the pants, we call that the pants, has fallen down out of where it's secured into the ductwork above. And they're saying that when they turn the dishwasher on, all the water shoots out and everything and it just makes a giant mess. What the heck, man? I don't know if this was sheared off or if the tack welds came off, but this is tacked on and this is tacked on, which usually it's not. Usually we just secure that with a rivet, but that's a whole nother thing. But it makes me wonder if this was secured on at one point. I don't know, that's a trip, but it did it on both sides. Look at that. That is a trip, huh? I always find the most interesting things in attics. So look at this, someone, this is like got tension on it. Someone secured this ductwork with wire? I don't understand, and then this? I don't, I don't understand what this wire is doing, but this whole thing dropped down and supposed to slide over. So not only do we have to lift these up, then we have to get it positioned right to where it slides over that. That's gonna be a problem. All right, so we got it pushed up to where it should be. We got it in the duct on the top. We cut two by fours to the right length. See that? And we just gotta kinda pull it over to where we need it. We'll line it up. And then we're gonna send stainless steel bolts and have a nut on the other end through. So we're not gonna weld this because this should be removable. So stainless steel should be perfect. All right, using some redneck ingenuity, some two by fours cut the length. We were able to get it all bolted together. So we got one, two, three. Those other things coming through aren't mine, but we put uh, stainless steel bolts with uh, nylon nuts on the other side. We got three on each side, and then we got it all back in up there. So why it happened, I don't know, but they should never have another problem with it again. And these should never be welded. They should always be bolted. So should all this, because then you could take it apart to work on it, you know? But yeah, luckily I had another person with me, but all is well, so they're done. All right, um, we have got a different one today. We're gonna be changing a drain pan on this unit. This is a very common carrier issue. Um, what happens is the drain pan, it's fiberglass and it breaks. The threads are gone, there's nothing left. A lot of people, like you can try putting tape on there to make it thicker to get it to stick in, but <clears throat> we constantly get service calls where this thing falls off. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we have to pull this whole unit apart to do this. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and change the drain pan and then we're also gonna fix this drain line too. Now I do have two people here with me because I quoted it this way. Um, the easiest way, some people will fight it and they can do it, but the easiest way is just pop the top on the unit. Pop the top and disassemble everything. Um, there's screws coming down from here that are awkward to get. You gotta move that drain, that bracket, like it's, it's a pain in the butt, but. And then there should be a couple screws it's an old oil leak back in there. We've repaired that. There should be, yeah, there's some screws down at the bottom, right down in there that are holding the drain pan in too. So it's a pretty big process to do this. I right, got the whole side of the unit off. Um, when you're doing this, you gotta watch because this whole thing flexes right here. You gotta make sure you get that back up where it needs to be. Now there's gonna be a bunch of screws down in here, going straight down right here. We gotta get in those and then also, on the end of this drain pan, there's two screws. Those are the ones that I was talking about that are way down in there. So we gotta get down in there too. We're currently working on getting the coil out of the way so maybe we can wedge our way back in there. If this is safe, we just gotta watch it to make sure. Now we recently cleaned this, but I think we might be able to get in there now, so. We found a cinder block. It's not the greatest, but it's propping this up. Um, we're completely free from the drain pan, but the drain pan's kind of like stuck in there, so I'm thinking it's just got some silicone on the other end. We just need to lift up on the evaporator coil, pull it out. The evaporator coil's still connected on the other side, but everything's gonna flex. This isn't, you know, these aren't fun. It's a chore. I have to stand up in the compressor section to get these two screws. We got them. Now we got it all screwed in, and we just gotta kind of center everything. Um, again, quote these things as a two-person job, or you're gonna be miserable. So I'd said earlier that we have two people here, so I'm gonna actually go get a bunch of drain fittings because I don't have everything we need to redo the drain. So I'm gonna leave one person here assembling the unit. I went ahead and helped him put the top on 
and then the rest he can do by himself putting the fan motors in hooking them back up and stuff so it's teamwork trying to be as efficient as possible all right we just made a new trap and got rid of that mumbo jumbo okay so when i make my traps i like t's everywhere so we have a t right here a t right here and a t right here it's important that this T and or this T is lower than this because if the main was to ever plug up, the water would back up and overflow that T before it backed all the way up into the unit and overflowed in the drain pan. Now, of course, if it plugs up inside the drain pan, you got no thing here. But we also put a trap right here, I mean a uh, T right here with a clean out that is removable. I think it's hot. Yeah, it's too hot for me to grab, but it's removable. Um, that way it doesn't break the negative air pressure uh, safety that the trap is doing. So because this return air and the drain pan is on the return air side, there's a negative pressure on there. It's pulling on that pipe. And that's why we have to have this water in here because it prevents air from sucking in through there. Now, if we didn't have this trap, what would happen is it would actually suck in air through the drain and it wouldn't let the water drain out and it would actually overflow inside while this is just open and, and you know, you could literally take this off of the unit and you can have it running and you'll just see the water just barely drip, drip while it's overflowing inside. So we got a nice new trap. We got to clean it up a little bit more because we still have some flux on it. You always want to clean off the flux with a wet towel. So we're working on that and then we're going to start this guy up. All right, this unit is beat down, man. This condenser has been straightened so many times. You can tell by the way the fins are wavy that we've taken straighteners to it. But the problem is the condenser gets weak and then it just goes flat again right away. Um, but uh, I mean, they wanted to fix it, you know? So it's up and running. Both compressors came back on. Drain line's done. Happy with that. I love that setup right there. Um, that's it. We're gonna wrap this one up. So these were just two short ones that I've been sitting on and I you know, needed to make a video of and I figured I'd throw them together. So the first one, we got a service call on the dishwasher spraying water everywhere and we don't work on dishwashers. So I was like, wait, what? And they're like, no, it's the exhaust fan. Like they were trying to explain to me what happened and they're like, the exhaust fan fell. And I'm like, what? The exhaust fans on the roof. And they're like, yeah, it like fell down. And I, I didn't understand what they were talking about. So then I go out there and it's this. Okay. So the, the pants had fallen down. Now we call those the, those ducks, right? They're stainless steel ducks. We call them stainless steel pants. And so those go together and then go up and um, somehow I don't understand what happened here because, and the other thing too, I showed that wire, that wire wasn't holding anything up. I don't know what that was about. I think someone used that to, to hold something when they were working or something. I, I don't know. I don't understand what those wires were there for, but they were just literally tied to a, a gas line, I think, or something, but they weren't doing anything. So what should have been there was there should have been tack welds or something of some sort on the dishwasher end pieces that were connected to it. And I don't know where they went. Now there was little screws coming through the opposite direction, like maybe for an accessory for the dishwasher or something, but there was no holes and no signs of a tack weld, which was tripping me out because I don't know how all that weight. And that was really, really heavy. That's all stainless steel. It's probably, um, 16 gauge, maybe it's, it's rather heavy. I mean, it was really, really a struggle to get it up. We could, I had two people and we tried to lift it and we couldn't lift it. We could only lift one side together at a time. Um, but we went and used some redneck ingenuity, ran over to home Depot, got some two by fours, figured out how tall we needed them and then wedged them under and together, like I had him lift and I slid them under and then pushed it up. And then we did the same on the other side. And then that gave us the ability to get inside the dishwasher and drill some stainless steel bolts through. You got to make sure if you're going to do something like this, you have to use stainless steel. It's not going to last very long at all inside that dishwasher with all the chemicals that they use and everything in there, the chlorines, and it, you use some weird metal, just you have to use stainless. So, um, like I said, normally what I do in this situation, I was kind of surprised that all the duct work was welded. Usually if I put it together, cause this happens a lot where they'll replace the dishwasher and I have to redo all the duct work. Usually I'll just use stainless steel rivets. That way it's removable and we'll just put in a bunch of rivets and then they last forever. I've never had a problem, but this one, there was no rivets, no anything. I, I don't even know. I don't know. But anyways, we got it taken care of. You know, we got the dishwasher exhaust put back up. The fan on the roof was working fine. It was just, and I think what they meant when they were saying it was spraying water out everywhere, 
is just because there's curtains in there and you know it's just coming out the top of that little duct or whatever you want to call it and inside that in piece that duct piece that fell down is an actual damper that um you can set so that way one side pulls more than the other so anyways that wasn't too difficult and then on to the next one is the drain pan so it's really common on those carrier units for the drain pans to just break where the threads are and what happens is is whenever you have to clean out the trap or do work on the unit fix the drain line you end up like moving the drain line and over time it just cracks that um, fiberglass it's it's just glass and it just gets really splintery and you can kind of you know just brush it and you can see little fiberglass flakes floating by so um, again I can't believe these customers you know want to keep fixing these units but whatever I'll do what they want you know so uh, we went ahead and pulled that drain pan out it's a pain in the butt to do that it's definitely a two-person job like I said you want to make sure you have two people when you're doing those things um, and it's shady the taking out the drain pan because and and that that's what trips me out the weight of the indoor blower assembly is pushing on the top of those six screws on the top of the drain pan that's what's holding up the indoor blower assembly now it also gets like four screws through the side panel which actually gives it rigidity too and helps to support it but it still trips me out that all that weight is sitting on the drain pan but Regardless, we looked around the roof again using some redneck ingenuity. We found a, a um, cinder block on the roof uh, that the satellite guys weren't using. It wasn't even there wasn't even room in their satellites for it. So you got to be careful too when you're grabbing cinder blocks on the roof because majority of the times they're there to weigh down the satellites in case the wind so the wind doesn't blow them over. So if you start stealing cinder blocks from their satellite stands, eventually the satellite's going to fall over. And that's going to lead to a service call and the customer is going to be pissed off because they have to pay the satellite guy to come out and go collect his cinder blocks from around the roof, you know. So you want to make sure you're paying attention if you're moving them. If you do take one temporarily, make sure you put it back on the satellite stand. But um, we uh, we used that cinder block to kind of hold up the indoor blower assembly because it was really bowing down and shady. And then, uh, yeah, just little by little it really wasn't difficult it was more just you had to meticulous you had to take apart the whole unit and again i've heard i i don't know how but i've heard people say that they can do that with one person i think you're crazy i'm sure someone could it would be miserable though um two people's best you know it's i try to take someone with me for most of these jobs and the customer's fine when i quote it i just quote it for two people i think i quoted that job for two guys eight hours each we didn't use that i think we got it done in like two guys four hours each or something like that um but it wasn't that difficult and we tried to do teamwork you know like i had said i needed to go get a bunch of fittings to do the drain line so i did that while someone else was putting the unit back together wiring in the condenser fan motors and everything but uh, just do yourself a favor and remember if most of the time if you're struggling with something you're probably doing something wrong okay if something is really really difficult Take a step back and think about it. Look at the big picture. Think about it for a minute. Majority of the time, there's an easy way to do things. Like I know that sometimes there's a manufacturer that does something insane and puts a screw in a place where they shouldn't put a screw or whatever. But majority of the time, if you just stop, take a breather, think about it for a minute. So in this situation on that EC, I just kind of looked at it and it's like, okay, you know, the easiest way is just to pull the top, pull the side and just take the whole thing apart. You know, two people knock it out. It's easier to like when I, I split the condenser, pulled it out and had my other uh, technician that was there with me hold it while I climbed in the unit, then he put the condenser back, you know? So it just helps to have two people for sure. So this was just two short ones. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, if I haven't, or if you haven't already, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel. You know, I know I don't really push that kind of stuff anymore, um, but uh, it definitely would help out if you guys would subscribe. I know we have like a large portion of viewers that actually just watch these videos and are not actually subscribed. Um, and by subscribing, you know, obviously you have the ability to turn on notifications and then you guys notice when I post and stuff. But also at the same time, my posting is really, really consistent. Um, I do a live stream Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube for the last, what, three years, same time. I do uh, one video on Thursday afternoon. Uh, it goes live on YouTube, 11.45 a.m. Pacific time. And then I also do a video Sunday morning, 5 a.m. Pacific time is when the video, and I've been doing those same times for, I don't know, 
good three years too. Same consistent every single week. So I try to stay as consistent as possible. So um, you guys, I also got to say thank you so very much. You know, the support and the comments that you guys leave, the emails that I get, the words of encouragement, the constructive criticism, you know, I'm all for all that stuff. So thank you guys so very much. Uh, last thing, if you guys haven't already and you're interested in supporting the channel, go check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, we have merchandise available. We got hats, beanies, shirts. Um, we do have a restock of hats coming in very soon. I know they've already been shipped to me, uh, and that's the small mediums because I'm all out of the small medium hats. Um, I've got an order, I think, of like 100 or something like that coming. So they'll be here soon. A um, couple other ways you guys can help support the channel. If you guys are interested in any tools, you can check out truetechtools.com. And if you guys like their pricing, I can vouch for their customer service. Um, they're on point. Uh, I've been using them for a very, very long time and actually uh, have a partnership thing going on with them where they give me an affiliate code. So if you guys want to see something you like on there and you're interested, you guys can use my offer code big picture one word. And uh, that'll get you as of today, uh, September 22nd of 2021, that'll get you an 8% discount on your order. And if you guys know what you're going to order, shoot me over an email. I can generate an affiliate link and I get a little bit of an extra commission and you still get to use my offer code big picture. So just a cool way to help support the channel. Um, you can also support the channel via Patreon. You can become a patron. You can also support the channel via YouTube channel memberships, uh, which Patreon and YouTube channel memberships are very similar. You just make a commitment to donating however much to the channel on a monthly basis. It charges your credit card. Uh, you can, I think it even sends you an email. I believe one of them does or something sends you an email to say, hey, we're going to do this. Do you still want to do it? So it's not like it just, I don't think they, they sneak that stuff in there. Uh, and then also you can help the channel via PayPal. Um, there's links in the show notes of this video to all those different methods. Um, but as I've said many other times, the easiest way to support the channel, guys, it's simple. Watch the video from beginning to end without skipping through anything. That's the easiest. Let YouTube handle everything. So, hey, I really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, we will catch you on the next one.